So the GTA Online Drug Wars DLC has finally released, and with it brought a new business opportunity in the form of a mobile acid lab. Although unlike just about any other business in the game, the new money-making operation is locked behind a series of missions that have to be completed before you're even given the luxury of buying it. In this video, I'll be walking you through all of the missions and the following steps required for setting up the new business and showing off a bunch of simple solo strategies that I've learned from my recent testing. Shortly after loading into the game, you'll get a phone call from old mate Ron, who says he wants to meet you at the liquor race at Sandy Shores, at which point a marker will be placed on your map and you can head over there. After you arrive and load into the mission, you'll be treated to a pretty cool cutscene and eventually spat out onto the roof, where you'll need to defend the building from a raid of the lost MC that starts swarming from all sides. This section's pretty self-explanatory, you've got the high ground and it's really not that difficult, so just do what the game tells you and you'll be all good. Once you're done with the shootout, Dax will ask you to retrieve the new RV, where you'll essentially be given two options. If you're playing solo and want to make it easy on yourself, I'd suggest calling up your mechanic and getting some sort of armoured vehicle like the Karuma delivered and driving over to the objective that way. But alternatively, if you want to challenge yourself, the game will also provide you with a boat where you can take it across the water and go guns blazing all by your lonesome. I decided to go with the more difficult path and took the boat, but it really comes down to personal preference. There will be a decent firefight once you get here though, so do consider that when you're making your decision. When you arrive, you have to work your way through a bunch of enemies before making your way to the journey at the top. Just take your time and smash those snacks where necessary, and it shouldn't give you too much trouble, especially if you bought an armoured car. Once you feel the coast is clear, go over to the RV and jump aboard so that we can get the hell out of here and get back to the liquor race where this all started. Along the way, you will be attacked by a barrage of bikers who will stop at nothing to try and recover their precious recreational vehicle. The journey does have a health meter, but luckily it's pretty sturdy, and as long as you drive quickly without too many big holdups, you should easily be able to get to the objective point without having to actually kill anyone, which definitely saves a lot of time. That premise then continues after you pick up Dax, where you'll continue to be pursued en route to the new property location. Same deal though, just ignore them and drive fast, I still had plenty of health left by the time I got here. Then yeah, the freak shop is finally available for you to check out, and it's a really cool building and all, but unfortunately at this point it's basically useless and can't be used to make money until we finish the rest of the missions. Now we're on to the second one, and this one's pretty easy as long as you know what to do. Firstly, you'll be required to pick up a truck from the docks. Once you've done that, you'll then need to attach it to the trailer full of party supplies before stealing it and getting out of here. Along the way, you'll be met by a wall of lost MC members trying to stop you. If you want to go ultra-violence mode, you can unload a few RPGs on them, but it's not really necessary. Just make sure you've got full health, and you should just be able to ram right through without too many problems. Shortly after that, the cargo will catch fire, and you'll need to detach the trailer by holding right on the D-pad before the whole thing blows up and takes you with it. Then you'll need to make your way over to the Lost MC Clubhouse, where you'll have to take out a bunch of bikers that are guarding some stuff that we need to steal inside the building. When you've taken care of them and made your way inside, you'll first need to take a photo of their plans that are in this little room located next to the bar. Once you've found it, just pull out your phone and send the picture off to Dax before we can start robbing the place blind. Now it's time to steal some green goodness located on the table in the main room, but in order to do that, we of course need to find a bag. Because I mean, it's not like we could have just come prepared, plastic bags are pretty common, but anyway. Luckily it's pretty easy to find, just look on the other side of the room next to the jukebox here and you should hopefully see it straight away. So yeah, pick that up and head over to the stash located at the table, where you'll want to start grabbing everything in sight before we bust out of here. After that, it's pretty straightforward. Just make your way outside and take care of the remaining lost MC members that are blocking your path. Where you'll then just need to deliver all of that loot back to the freak shop to finish things up. Now we're on to mission 3, and in the first section you'll be required to go to Stab City, where once again you'll have to take out a bunch of lost MC members and destroy their property. Just like on the last one, I decided to challenge myself and go without an armoured vehicle. But if you're rolling solo and want to make things a bit easier on yourself, definitely think about buying a Karuma if you don't have one already. They're not too expensive, can be delivered directly to you even during missions, and will make things oh so much faster. Regardless of that, just slowly make your way around the circular road and take out any vehicles, bikers, or lost MC property that you see along the way. 
The things that need to be destroyed will be marked in red on your map as you get close to it, so just follow the dirt track and it's basically impossible to miss. Then it's just a simple matter of wreaking havoc and blowing up everything in your path. Once you're done with that, you'll be told to go over to Miller's Fishery on the other side of the water, and when you get here, you'll be tasked with stealing a bunch of supplies that are scattered in obscure places throughout the large yellow circle on the map. Now this part of the mission had me really frustrated, but that was mainly due to not knowing where the packages were located. The enemies never stopped spawning, and trying to fend them off while searching high and low got annoying very quickly. Fortunately for you though, my pain leads to your gain, and I've been able to put together a map showing off various places that I've found them throughout my many playthroughs of this mission. You only have to collect 10, but their locations are semi-randomised. Some have fixed spawn points, mainly the four packages that are inside buildings, but the rest can be found in a few possible spots. So be sure to keep the map on hand and explore each area thoroughly. The packages can be a bit hard to see in the dark, but they do have a bit of a glow to them, and will be marked with a green dot on your minimap when you get close, so just keep an eye out for that. Because I missed the dialogue explaining it, the two packages that are located around here had me a bit confused and that's because the green dots won't appear until you're inside the building, which can be accessed using the door with the blue marker. Once in here, you'll be confronted with a couple of guards and will almost immediately see the green dots on your map, which you should obviously then collect before continuing. When all of the packages have been collected, you can finally get yourself out of here, but even that can't be simple and Dax will ask you to do so by using a dodo seaplane that the Lost have been using to do their runs. So very slowly make your way back to Los Santos and eventually you'll be asked to land the plane in the storm drain to finish up the mission. The next one goes by the name Uncontrolled Substance and it's the most on theme and enjoyable experience that I've had with the DLC so far. It doesn't need any explanation and really doesn't have any threats to the player at all so honestly at the risk of spoiling the good vibes I'm not even going to bother covering this one. I'm sure you'll enjoy it though it is a lot of fun. Mission number four is basically just a copy of the Stab City mission that we did earlier. And really at this point, I got a bit sick of the whole premise of drive here, kill a bunch of peeps and destroy their stuff. So even I decided to start using a Karuma as well. And honestly, I'm glad I did. With the missions getting repetitive, the challenge aspect felt a bit tainted and I just wanted to get through them as quickly as possible. When it comes to bullet damage, the armor on this thing is second to none and you can just cruise around taking people out with very little risk. Then when you pull up to something that needs to be destroyed, you can just jump out of the car, launch your explosive of choice into the tents, and you're good to go. For whatever reason, the required position of your explosive can be a bit annoying, so just make sure you load it up on both the left and right hand sides of the tent to ensure successful destruction. When you're eventually done destroying the lab equipment, you'll then need to find a hippie van that looks like this, that will then give us our next objective when you jump inside. Once your map's updated and you've got the information you need, for the love of God, do the opposite of what I do and get the hell out of the van. It's not at all necessary and it just slowed me down. Instead, jump back in your Karuma or whatever vehicle you brought with you and go to the nearest dot on your map. You will be pursued by people along the way, but it's not a big deal. Just make your way around to each of the van locations and hit them with a sticky bomb or whatever you've got on you. When all three are taken care of, you'll be told to go to the altruist camp where once again, yep, you guessed it, you'll get to take out a bunch more enemies and destroy some property. There will be another three vans for you to destroy, all of which will be marked on your map. So just carefully work your way through the barrage of enemies and take out the first two. But before you take out the third van, try and make sure that you're not vulnerable to any surrounding enemies because as soon as you destroy it, a Valkyrie helicopter is going to immediately spawn in and try to shred you to pieces. At that point, immediately grab out your rocket launcher or minigun or whatever high-powered weapon you've got available and be sure to blast that helicopter a new exhaust pipe. Once you're done with that, just make your way towards the exit while being a bit careful of any enemies that might try and stop you. Then just follow the dirt path for a while and you'll eventually finish up. Now we're finally on to the last mission that's required before purchasing the Acid Lab business. This one can be a bit challenging, but thanks to a few tips I picked up along the way, you should hopefully find it pretty easy. When you arrive at Humane Labs, it will encourage you to go the stealth approach, but honestly it takes forever and the mechanics are so broken that it doesn't work half the time anyway. As you can see, it's instructing me to use a keypad to gain access to the building. Fortunately though, I found a pretty easy method of getting to it. 
simply charge your way through the enemies, taking out any guards that you see along the way. As soon as there isn't any in your immediate vicinity, you should be able to use the keypad, even if there's a few people that are shooting at you from a distance. It took me a few runs to figure it out properly, but if you follow my path and stay on top of your health and armor, you shouldn't have too much trouble observing the lengthy animation. Once inside, you'll of course have to take out some more guards, but eventually you'll be told to find some chemicals located inside a bunch of crates that you have to search. I'll quickly go through all of their locations now. You do have to keep an eye on your six as you go along, but honestly, I had very few interruptions throughout the process. When you're done with that, be sure to top up your health before shooting the box on the wall here, which will open the gates so that we can start making our way out of here. Once again, you'll be met with a bit of resistance, but you'll have the jump on them and they shouldn't give you too much trouble. Eventually you can move up a little bit, where you'll start to understand my reasoning for parking the car in this spot. You can of course just take one of the jeeps, but they're quite slow and will make the next part of the mission a bit more difficult. Now we need to crash ourselves a train, so make your way over to the switching station where you'll be told to pull a lever inside this little building here, at which point the tracks will change and we can then proceed with the next stage. Then you just need to collect a cutting saw that's marked on the map. It only has a couple of guys with melee weapons guarding it, so just take care of them and grab the tool that's on the table. The next part involves us going over to the side of the train crash, where we need to open up a whole bunch of containers with the cutting saw we just collected, in search of more chemicals to set up the acid lab. Fortunately, I learned another neat trick here that can save you a whole bunch of time and frustration. Basically, the game tells you to open up the containers, and when you find the chemicals, you're meant to collect them right away. Problem with that is, every time you do, a new wave of enemies rolls in to try and ruin your fun. So to make things a hell of a lot easier, every time you find a deposit of chemicals, just leave it there and don't collect it until the end. They'll permanently be marked on your map with a green dot and won't despawn. So all you have to do is open all of the containers and then once you know where the chemicals are, you can start collecting them one after the other. By doing it this way, you'll only have to contend with one wave of enemies and that's going to make things a whole lot easier, especially if you're playing solo. When you've picked up all of the chemicals, you'll then be told that you need to collect an armoured vehicle as well, which is located at the back of the train. Take care of any nearby enemies before jumping inside, and consider pulling up your snack menu just in case you get swarmed. It can take a minute or two to manoeuvre the vehicle off the train, and you don't want to die at this late stage of the game. Then once you're free, you just need to drive it back to the freak shop to finish things up. You'll be chased by enemies the whole way, and there is a health meter to consider, but honestly, I just drove like a stabbed rat and didn't bother taking out a single one. Now that the main missions are done, we're left with one final task before we can purchase the new business and get things underway. You'll be told to go to one of three locations marked on your map, where we have to steal the final pieces of equipment required for the acid lab. In here, you just need to take out a handful of guards before jumping on the forklift and loading up the goods onto the back of the truck. When the truck is loaded, you'll need to deliver it to the freak shop. Once again, you'll be chased by enemies the whole way, but there's no need to take them out. Just drive quickly and you'll be back in no time. Alright, so you're finally done and ready to purchase the acid lab. To do so, you need to come inside the freak shop property and speak to the guy located here, where you'll have to part with 750k to gain access to the new business. If you want to check it out, you can come inside and get a look at the bare bones operation. It's a pretty cool looking setup and has a bit of a different energy to the other drug businesses in the game. Unfortunately though, it mostly acts the same as the MC businesses, requiring you to purchase or steal supplies, which will then be passively turned into product over time that needs to be sold. A little bit uninspired, but hey, at least we got a new revenue stream. The downside compared to the MC stuff though is unlike them where you can simply upgrade the equipment via the computer without any requirements other than money. In this case, even the bloody upgrades are locked behind missions as well. You'll be told that you need to complete 10 of Dax's free row missions before you're even given the option to purchase it. 
Granted this isn't a requirement and you can still run the operation without it, but to make max profits it's pretty much the only way and that's a bit annoying. Either way though, to get them done you'll need to call up DAX and hit the request work feature presented in the top left menu. Some of the missions are honestly pretty fun and I think people might have enjoyed them more if they weren't forced to do them for something as trivial as an equipment upgrade. Especially when considering the missions then have a 48 minute cooldown timer after every single one. It's going to take literal hours to get them all finished and to me that felt forced and a bit unnecessary. I am planning on releasing a complete and comprehensive money guide for the Acid Lab as soon as I possibly can but it's going to take a bit of time to do all of the required testing and research to bring the best possible quality guide, so bear with me on that one. It should be an absolute banger once it's done though, so definitely stay tuned. If you found this video useful though, tapping the like button really does help out a lot, and if you're new around here, be sure to think about subscribing as well. I'll be covering as much of the Drug Wars DLC as I possibly can, and I've got a lot of really exciting content on the way. Until we meet again, you bunch of legends, I'm Red Knight Trace and I'll catch you on the next one.